Hello everyone, welcome back to the AWS Cloud Engineer Essential Series. My name is Dheera Chaudhary and in today's tutorial, we will cover the very first step in your AWS Cloud Engineering journey by setting up your AWS account. So if you want to work on projects, practice for certifications or simply learn AWS hands-on, you need your own AWS account. And in this video, we will walk through the prerequisite step-by-step -step account creation, free tier details, and some best practices after setup to keep your account secure. By the end, you will have your own AWS account ready to use and the confidence to start exploring AWS services. So let's begin by understanding why it's important to set up an AWS account. So setting up your own AWS account is a gateway to learning and working with AWS Cloud. First, it gives you access to 200 plus AWS services from compute and storage to databases. AI and security tools as well. Second, you get hands-on learning opportunities through AWS free tier, which allows you to experiment at little or no cost. Third, having your own account is often a requirement for projects and certifications. So you will need it to practice labs, attempt certification scenarios, and work on real world assignments for your POC projects. And finally, it enables you to manage billing and account settings directly, giving you full control over your cloud usage and costs. So next, let's look at the prerequisite you would need before signing up for an AWS account. So before you are creating an AWS account, make sure you have the following prerequisites ready. You will need a valid email address that, has, uh, that hasn't been used for another AWS account. This will become your root login ID. Next, a credit card or debit card is required for verification. So AWS uses this to confirm your identity and charge you only if you go beyond the free tier limits. You will also need a mobile phone for identification verification. And uh, AWS will send you a one-time password that is OTP to confirm your contact details. So please use that number uh, which, on which you can receive the OTP because that would be required for authentication. And in some cases, AWS may also ask for government issued ID as an additional security check, especially in certain regions that they have listed on their official website. And having this ready ensures your sign up process goes smoothly. Now let's walk through the step by step account creation process. So uh, to create the account, what you will have to do is you will have to visit uh, Amazon website. So what you can do go to google say create aws account free once you say that it is going to bring you on this page i will just open this page once you open this page it is going to uh, take you to this page now the catch over here is everyone know that aws is providing a free tier for 12 months but now things have changed after july 15th because before july 15th it was legacy free tier if i click on this you will see over here that it was having 12 months of free free tier legacy usage but now things have changed because as if you are uh, doing it after july 15th 2025 then this is the new tier which has came in which is known as aws free tier and as part of aws free tier this is things that you will get. You will receive 200 USD in credits. Uh, you, uh, it will include free usage of selected services and no charges incurred unless you switch to paid plan. Along with this, it is also having free tier categories over here. If you click on this, you will you can see all the different different uh, categories based on which if you click on that, it is going to show uh, how much of it uh, is having free tier, how much is not having free tier. And even if you go over here, so see over here, they have uh, 186 uh, services. So you can search for any service name over here and it will tell you whether it is available for free plan or not. So if you see Amazon EC2, it is showing it is available on both the plans. That means you are going to get a small section of it as part of uh, free tier learning also. So if I go ahead and click plus on it, so over here, it will give you more information about what that EC2 instance is service is going to offer and the other details for that 
specific service. So this is how you can go ahead and uh, check the details to understand the service that you're going to use, whether it is eligible for free plan usage or not. Now from the official website itself, I will show you how you can go ahead and create your new account. Click on how to create an account. Once you click on how to create an account, it is going to take you on this page. Once you're on this page, just scroll down and here is the process of creating the account. It is the step by step process that you need to follow. So if I say step one, so as part of step one, what you're going to do is uh, when I go ahead, so it is going to ask me for email address and the account name that I want to keep as soon as you provide the email address and the account name. So it is, uh, and if you click on verify email address, it is going to send you an verification email. As soon as you get the verification email at that time, uh, what you have to do is you are going to get a, Q, uh, a OTP that comes as part of your email. You have to verify that. And then it takes you to the next information, which is your personal or business information. So if you are creating it for your personal use, you have to provide your personal information. Once you provide that, as your email ID is already verified, it is going to take you ahead and it is going to ask you for your payment method. So once you provide your payment method, it is going to ask you the address for which it is, you, uh, it is going to be built along with the card details that has to be added over here. Once you provide that, it is going to go ahead and ask you for your phone number. Remember your account is tied up with a phone number. Uh, with verification. So once you use it for one account, you cannot use it for other same for email address. So you have to provide your phone number as part of it. And once you provide that, it is again going to uh, give you an OTP and you have to enter that OTP back to confirm the verification. Once it is done, then you have to go ahead and select the plan. So for us, the plan would be the free tier plan. And once you select the free tier plan, your sign up is going to be completed. And once your sign up is going to be completed, then it takes around 24 hours for AWS team to confirm whether your account is active or not. And why it takes 24 hours? Because whenever they create a default account of yours, if I take you to my one of my existing account, see this is my existing account. And if I click on the drop down, so these are the number of different different regions where they are going to create a default VPC for you. That is, uh, they are going to give you free offerings. So if I click on global view, once I click on global view, and if I take you to this part, as part of this global view, you can see that there are so many data centers and 50% of them, they enable by default for you. So this is where it takes some time for the provisioning where they are going to create a VPC and a default subnets for you so that you can start uh, immediately working on your AWS cloud environment. And that is how you come, uh, that is how your sign up for new account creation completes. Now let's understand about the AWS free tier more in detail. So once your account is created, you can take advantage of AWS free tier to start learning without worrying about high costs. So first, the six month free services include popular offerings like EC2, S3 and RDS. These services come with generous limit for your first year. And if you're a beginner, it should be enough for you for hands-on practice and for certifications practice. Second, some services are always free. For example, AWS Lambda, DynamoDB and CloudWatch all have usage limits that never expire, but it keeps on changing time to time. So it is recommended that uh, as I showed you the specific uh, website, over here. So if you, right now I was speaking about CloudWatch, right? Uh, or Lambda, it is always free. So you can search for Lambda over here and then you can click on this and you can say that, see, it is saying uh, 10 lakh free request per month. So this is the free part. And uh, if you go about that, there is a different pricing. So this is how uh, you can uh, use these resources and 10 lakh free request per month is enough uh, for you to practice. Then. Third, if we go, so third is pay as you go model. So once your free tier limit expires uh, and if you exceed the limit above it, you only pay for what you use. You are not going to pay for the free tier, uh, free tier resources also, which you have utilized. You will only pay for the resources you have utilized above the limit 
of free tier and finally aws offers billing protection so by setting up billing alerts you can monitor usage and avoid unexpected charges in short the free tier is your safe sandbox to experiment learn and build real skill without financial risk next let's have a look at your first login and see once you log in how the aws management console looks so let me take you uh to next slide where we would be talking about how our aws management console looks so when you log in for the first time you will enter the aws management control and you will see a central hub for managing all the services and at the top of it you will find a service search bar let me show you so this is your central hub okay and at top of it you can find a service search bar so if you want to search for any service you can go ahead and search from here by saying i am or you can say ec2 or you can say vpc whatever you want to search it is going to give you the results and you can directly go to that specific service apart from that when you keep on using it at that time every time you use a service and it is there in your browser cache it will be uh, shown over here so you can see all these services i have used previously that is the reason it is showing me at the current moment apart from that the dashboard uh, uh, apart from that you will also notice the region drop down menu uh, this allows you to select between different aws region closest to you or your users which help you reduce latency and sometimes also affects cost so if you click on this you can select in which region you want to go ahead and work so right now i have selected the region as singapore so i am right now in the singapore region and all these resources that you see i would be using in singapore region so you can think of management console as your uh, control center it's where every service every setting and every configuration starts so next let's explore what would be the best practices you should follow as soon as you have set up the aws account so as soon as you had, uh, set up your aws account and it is ready uh, so uh, the first best practice that you should follow is you should enable mfa for your root user so once your account is uh, created so the email with which your account is created and when you log in with that understand you are logging in as a root user so when you log in in as a root user it's very important for you to safeguard your credentials and you can do that by using multi factor authentication and this adds a strong extra layer of security beyond just a password that you use and second what you can do is create an im user for your daily task instead of using this root account user every time and the root user should only be used for account level administration like uh, uh, changing the access security keys or other uh, admin level ch uh, changes for which account is uh, root is necessary and finally explore resources like uh, free tier labs tutorials and documentation this will help you and gets hands on experience with aws services in safe and structured way as part of this best practice i forgot to mention see there are some solutions which are already been mentioned over here and there are different different categories to it so this is you can see that uh, if you want uh, aws has a go to aws solution library if i click on this it is going to take you to the solutions library where some of the solutions are already been provided and you can take reference from them so this is what they have added recently where existing solutions is available for platform engineering cloud architecture uh, app developer and ai ops so you can uh, leverage this too and apart from that if you want uh, to get started with training and certification or if you want to uh, visit their aws central uh, builders hub so this is something new that has recently been uh, recently came in 2025 where you will see what are all their programs if you want to learn you can search for the topics based on which you can perform a search and there will be different different blocks which are available and the support articles are also available over here see the official support articles so implement health check so if you want to implement health check you can go ahead and uh, use this specific blog if i click on this blog it is going to give me a lot of information how to set up and how to get that implemented so this is how you can also uh, take leverage of the documentation which has been provided by them from the aws central hub console itself and when it says explore aws so you can check their marketplace 
builder central is this the same and uh, uh, if there is a new announcement uh, you get that announcement over here also so recently uh, aws has tied up with open ai where open ai open weight models are available on amazon bedrock so this is the announcement and reinvent 2025 is going to come uh, so they have uh, already mentioned over here that you can go ahead and select the sessions that you want uh, to go for so these are the informations that you get as part of your central hub and it's a best practice if you are using it on daily basis you should actually go through it for uh, getting more information or for reading some documentation so that brings us to the end of this session on getting started with aws uh, where uh, we have uh, established our aws account and we walk through why you need AWS account, the prerequisite, the step-by-step sign-in process, the free tier benefits, and the best practices that you should follow right after the setup. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update in this AWS Cloud Engineer Essential Series. My name is Dheera Chaudhary and thank you for joining me today. See you in the next video.